I think we've got to start removing all the labels, you know, and really getting to the bottom of our humanity and looking at those things that are very harmful to our humanity. Racism is harmful to our humanity. Poverty is harmful to our humanity. These are the triple evils my father talked about. Militarism is harmful uh, to our humanity. What my father taught is so critical to us creating a just, humane, equitable, and peaceful and sustainable world. What do you think from what you, you remember of your father, from what your mother talked about and those who knew him well, how do you think he would deal with the situations that we're faced with today? If you really listen to him and read him, he understood the holistic struggle. He understood, obviously, the struggle of Black Americans as being one. But he also understood how white people were processing and even dealing with us and could speak to some of those issues and even help to, uh, them to understand, try to help them to understand, you know, that they're victims of, of, of wrong thinking. And so we can't try to destroy them. What we have to do is to try to help transform their, their way of thinking. What are your thoughts about uh, around race, uh, critical race theory, as well as the push to keep it out of schools? Well, you know, if I might be honest with you, I'm still trying to understand um, the whole issue um, around critical race theory. My understanding is it's, it's a legal context where it all started. Um, and um, that people have used it as a means to attack the teaching of uh, of true history and the implications of that history today. I, I think the important thing is this is a, this has been an action because it's a, it's a backlash. The daddy called you know whenever there's progress, yeah. You know, as we saw the awakening of so many people on the heels of what happened uh, with George Floyd and you know all the others, Breonna Taylor, uh, Ahmaud Arbery, and so many others. The backlash, because people are now afraid, you know, what's going to happen to what I've known of America as a white person. I want to talk about voting, uh, because voting mm -hmm. rights are being attacked across America in different states. Uh, talk to me about how you feel and, and what do you think should be done when you hear of many states or many lawmakers trying to push things that are really suppressing the voters' rights. I'm gonna go back to something I just said. With every step towards progress, holistic progress, there's always gonna be backlash, resistance, pushback. It comes with it. It got people, it caught people off guard because people were kind of focused on just the election and not realizing that the outcome of the election is going to bring a backlash. There's going to have to be a lot of working on the Republicans, not attacking them, but trying to win some of those Republicans over to understanding the importance of the national legislation at this point, the John Lewis Voter Advancement Act, Voter Rights Act, and the uh, For the People. Act. What do you say to people who want to do something? They want to ensure that their rights, uh, as well as those who are disenfranchised, their rights are protected so that their voices can be heard because we know our voices and our vote. Well, the first thing is don't go do something else. Find out who's already doing it. We got to bolster the efforts that are taking place because a lot of times we dilute our strength when we try to do something else that kind of is almost duplicative of what's already happening. But the greatest thing is that there's going to have to be at some point a collective effort to really win over more senators on the Republican side. It's like what you said, you know, five fingers, each finger can do something, but you come together, it's a powerful fist. So Yes, it is. That's it. All right. Well, I thank you so much for your time. It, it truly is an honor. Thank you. I appreciate it.